Second, this is the <coughs> second of our workshops in Vancouver and going into and giving us the opportunity to go deeper into a subject versus going from home to home and not covering too much information gives us the opportunity to go deep into Sufi healing and the power of Sufi meditation and opening of the heart and opening of the divine oceans of mercy. We covered last time always as a, as a recap to make sure that we're all comfortable and we're all together in the same direction on the meditation. That is the foundation of everything that we're, we're building. Before we go into the knowledge of the heart, to recap the meditation, the breathing, how to do the breathing. We're going to practice the breathing exercise to open up all of our energy Anyone who was at the last class, are there any questions on, on the breathing? Are there things that you practice and had difficulty with? Or is there something we didn't specifically cover in the breathing before we start again going over the breathing exercise, how to do the breathing, how to visualize or what to visualize when we're doing the breathing? Are there any questions as far as the breathing before we start? Professional readers. <laughs> We've all, per all perfected it. <laughs> perfected the reading. There we go. Fantastic. Well, let's see what happens now. <laughs> In the breathing is the fuel of our ascent. Allah Rahim When Allah when the Divine created us from His two hands and molded that clay into our form, the secret of that divine breath was blown into the clay. So what takes us from clay 
and makes us to be an honored creation, a creation that was created by the two hands of the divine. And the divine is showing that example or stressing that reality that I have created you with my two hands. And from that point of clay to the point of your reality, then it is the divine breath that sets you apart. It is the divine breath that gives our existence and nobility. So how do we recognize that breath is the qudra, is the power. So anyone trying to reach towards that qudra, power, and it's not the material power to have power over people. We're talking about the divine power to reach towards that divine presence, divine kingdom. It's all in the secret of the breath. Mastering the breath, understanding the breath, the flaws, like in construction, that something else is going to be lopsided and you find out later it was the foundation wasn't laid flat. So the breath is our most important. The secret of the breath and the power of the breath that's coming onto the lungs, the energy that's coming onto the lungs and purging all the negativity, cleansing the body, cleansing the blood, cleansing all of that reality, that blood has to go pure and purified back into the heart. So it is the essence of our way and realizing its importance and not underestimating. Sometimes something so simple, you say, it's too simple to be the reality. I'm looking for something complicated. And we make our lives complicated, which is not. The most basic function, if done properly, opens all the realities, which is breathing. So when we breathe in consciousness, means understanding our zikr coming in and the zikr coming out, breathing in that chant and that resonance, and we are taking from the ocean of who? Who, the essence. And now you'll see on TV at times advertising who everywhere. Dow Chemical has a commercial now for who man, human. <laughs> it's not even, I never saw that before means that it's time and the Divine is sending out its advertising, its marketing, that if you can connect to that ocean of who, it is la hawla wa la quwwata. Hawla is the madad and support. We say there is no help and there is no power except in Allah. The hawla means help and support are the shaykhs, are the mentors, are the guides. They help us to the quwa. So then the zikr of who is the heavenly emanation that's coming down. And receiving and tapping into that heavenly emanation is the essence of the breath. And that's why if you go to a, a power line, you hear It is in the who. All energy is based in who. So if you sit in complete science, silence, you will hear who, the zikr of who. It is the zikr of silence. So if you can reach a point of peacefulness and silence, you actually reach a point of who, because there's no silence. The reality of silence is that everything is in praise of the divine. We leave the physical sense of hearing to the spiritual sense of hearing. The spiritual sense of hearing is going to unlock for us the reality of the zikr of who. So then our, our power is going to unlock that who. And understand that this physicality, its essence is from that breathing. So that the blood that's carrying all of our waste and all of our bad character is an attack. We tried to describe last night before and I think the last session is that evilness is our bad character is constantly after us and it's from the earth and it moves up our two legs coming up because the negative energy that's always moving on the earth it comes up the two legs so then this negative energy is always attacking us that's why you always have leg foot and back pains because when you work a lot, you're active in, in the material world, this energy is constantly moving its way up. As it's moving its way up, you find that your stomach in, in spiritual teaching is the earth. So the earth is the stomach. You see the equator 
on the earth. They say all, all the fitna and difficulty is at the equator. Because there's a clash now. The material world is, is coming up to the belly, right at the belly button point. And then the heavenly emanation coming from the heavens, dressing the head, coming down towards the heart and trying to move towards the body and the clash begins. Your material desire, the lower life and, and what people do with their lower world. And then the higher is the aspiration and the heart. So the higher order is the heart and what the heart wants should be for divine and the lower is what happens on earth. And that's why the lower part of the body. So this clash is then coming now at the midpoint. And they're fighting. Heavenly emanation wants to direct us towards heavenly life because the soul and the soul's eternal journey. And the material world and the physical body is made from the material world and wants to enjoy its pleasures. So its only focus is the material world because it's the clay and it takes its pleasure in the clay. So the battle in our spiritual struggle are these two forces. How to bring that heavenly energy, how to balance the material energy. You can't get rid of it. You can't isolate yourself and take your feet off the ground. But what you can do is understand what's happening in the clash. So then we view ourselves as the heavenly kingdom, the upper quadrant. This is the upper triangle we said before from the Star of David. The lower triangle is from that midpoint down towards the genital, being the apex of the lower triangle and our material life. That's how you bring life into this material world. And then the apex of the upper triangle being the third eye that you use from your right breast, your left breast, are the support of your belief, of your soul, and the apex of that means will be your eye of intuition. If all of that is, is opening, then opens the eye of vision. It means you see what people can't see. It opens up that spiritual reality. Is there a phone? There's a video. Look, somebody's phone in the back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was beautifully said. I love that. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> it's nice to have you back. Oh, thank so you. Nice. <laughs>